Hey, 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 how's it going everybody? It is Matt and it is finally, finally Fiendish Friday. I hope, first and foremost, I hope each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk. Uh, because life sucks otherwise. And I hope you're watching some good movies or binge watching some series. Maybe checking out some of the movies I reviewed this week. Uh, definitely check out Popcorn if you have not. Or uh, Tammy and the T-Rex is total blast. Uh, uh, a nice little 90s uh, uh, horror, comedy, cult, exploitation. Like, it, it's mostly a comedy, but it's got a lot of... It's got gore, and, and it's definitely part of that cult nostalgia because not everybody in the world is going to know about Tammy and the T-Rex. So, do check that one out. It is worth the watch. It is a, a, a very glorious uh, dinosaur movie. If you couldn't tell by the name. Now, let's get on to the movie of the day. Today's is from 1980, the year I was born. So, 40 years ago. Whew, that made me feel old saying that. Uh, this cut is unrated, uncensored, uncut. As uncut as you can get when it comes to this release. Uh, so, it's running at an hour and 36 minutes. I know that IMDb lists this film as an hour and 35 minutes. So, that that's right there is uh, showing that it, it's been cut in and so this is an uncensored cut. It's longer. Uh, it is starring Robert Kerman of pornography fame. Uh, and I believe he did Cannibal Ferox and... Uh, he did a couple of other other films, but uh, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But he is a uh, 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 one of those actors who tried to go go uh, uh, make legit films, but um, he made some crazy horror stuff. And it in this one in general, uh, it kind of like dried up his acting career as far as. Um, pornography or as far as mainstream or uh, or anything that uh, would go close to a the theatrical release so so this uh, this movie it tainted some careers along the way uh, and it made some careers it uh, definitely boosted the director Roger de Dato uh, his uh, uh, career um, which he was the director of this and he did him and a couple other people in this got in trouble for filming this movie, uh, mostly for the animal cruelty stuff. And they thought that, uh, they actually killed the the uh, group of documentarians in the film, and unfortunately, that did not happen. Uh, they did not just take them out into the green inferno and just slaughter them. No, no, no. They had he had them sign contracts that they would basically just go away for a while and do whatever, stay out of the limelight, uh, um, not do any kind of acting or anything just just be yourself somewhere else you know one of those ordeals they pay you to pay you to be elsewhere uh i i think that was that was a uh a, br a brilliant idea from that ruggiero came up with um i'm pretty sure he's one of the first to ever do that because uh, 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 they had to when they were going through court the court process the trials for this they even had to bring in those actors to prove like hey see i didn't kill them here they are i just simply made made them uh, 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 sign these contracts that they would just kind of like disappear for a while. So he that that right there he got okay with that, but the animal cruelty stuff is is what got him in 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 most it, it what ultimately got him because there's a, a like a little muskrat there's monkey two monkeys that were killed during this you only see one of them on screen but they they uh, ended up killing two because they had to do two takes on on that scene uh, they killed a tortoise uh, and a pig uh very all all four of those are from what you see are very um hard to watch and can and is very heartbreaking it's um nothing that i i care to watch but it because i've seen this film so many times uh and i'm i'm 
madly in love with with keeping things in cut uncut i think censorship is the devil uh anybody that believes in censorship needs to just go elsewhere um this is not the place for you uh, because i am not going to censor myself nor my product uh just because of of of, of somebody that doesn't like my my opinion Granted, that's it's just that it's just an opinion, and and you can judge me for that if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> uh, but let's get back onto this one. We got Francesca Cliardi, Cliardi uh, Perry Perkin, uh, Luca Bar 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 Barbareschi, uh, Salvatore Basile, Ricardo Fuentes, and Clark Gabriel York. And like I said, this was directed by Rogero Deodato, and this is none other than my very old copy of Cannibal Holocaust that I really, really, really need to upgrade. This is the uh, two disc deluxe edition that they were that grindhouse releasings did back in the early 2000s and yes i got it back in the early 2000s uh probably 2003 maybe 2004 so so it's been it's been a hot minute 16 17 years since since i purchased this and and uh i definitely am due for a upgrade on this one so maybe in the near future i will be getting a new blu-ray on this bad boy because i love it so much it's it's a uh, masterpiece in my opinion and is a film that uh, uh, should not be uh, uh, dismissed or or uh, scoot that camera back just a pinch dismissed because of of its uh, um, animal cruelty stuff because otherwise this is a fantastic film it delivers it, it packs packs one hell of a punch uh, it is. Um, one you'll never ever forget even without the animal cruelty stuff in here there's stuff that is just mind blowing uh there's a scene that involves a a uh uh girl who's getting raped with this this spike steak stick thing uh and then he shoves a ball of mud with a bunch of like looks like like uh uh, uh thorns and throws it inside of her vagina um beats the hell out of her and kills her one of those ordeals uh and then shoves her body down the stream uh that scene is very memorable there's a scene where there's multiple 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 scenes that are extremely memorable in this uh minus the animal cruelty stuff there's one where they come up on a girl who has been uh impaled and the spike is going in through her bottom parts and come coming out of her mouth very uh uh intense scene uh, very cool effect uh that how they pulled that off is just awesome they had her they basically had a giant piece of pole that was in the ground that had a bicycle seat a very small bicycle seat type thing for her to sit on and they would and then they had a giant stick of balsa wood that they stuck in her mouth to stick out like like it went all the way through uh, uh very clever work um i I commend them for for doing that. Now, some not all the effects are 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 uh, um, passable by nowadays standards. There's a lot of them. It's just like, oh come on, that is cheese dick as hell. But there's stuff that still uh, holds up in my opinion, like that scene in general, uh, the scene with the rape scene with the uh, the uh, spike uh, and or not the spike, but the wooden pe the piece of of wood and and thorns like that. Those two scenes, it's they still uh, work perfectly, uh, still pack the punch. So so if you are squeamish or any of that dumb stuff, uh, don't watch this movie between the animal cruelty and those scenes uh there's a scene where they go through a village and they basically slaughter everybody in the village uh that scene is pretty rough because they they back them into a uh a small hut and they set the hut on fire so it's it's very very gruesome in that aspect um 
there's also some execution videos on here that came from uh I forget where they but they are from some uh some uh African documentaries on executions and I think there was a a piece of it that ended up on one of the faces of death films if memory serves me correct uh I don't know which one it was I think it was the first or the second one uh, uh I could be very very wrong cuz there are there's so much stuff that they show on those it's it's easy to forget certain forget forget some and then it's easy to remember certain ones because there are extremely memorable ones about that franchise uh now speaking of a franchise there's like i believe five or six uh um unofficial sequels to this i have one of them uh which is um oh shoot i have it as Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. I was I was going to watch it the other day, but I decided not to. I uh, I can't remember what I chose in, instead. But uh, either way, um, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley is I I want to say is the uh, unofficial second se first sequel to this one. So it's part two. I could be very very wrong. Um, that one has an awesome name. Uh, does it deliver on the goods as much as Cannibal Holocaust does? No, it does not. Um, it would be a subpar cannibal film compared to all the other Italian cannibal films. Uh, now, what is this about? I've gone on for 11 minutes and haven't told you one thing about how the what the movie is about. It's about a group of uh, uh, film documentarians that are known to push the limits, going into the uh, the lush green fo green forest of the jungle of the Green Inferno, which I believe is in Papua New Guinea. Uh, um, it, uh, uh, either way, it's a very deadly place. Um, they cause a lot of troubles there. They go missing. Nobody knows if they're dead or alive. So they send in Robert Kerman's character, who is a scientist uh, at a uh, at a prestigious w with a prestigious degree, and blah blah blah. blah. Um, they send him in in to look for these people with with a uh, a couple of guides because they needed to find the best guides that they could, and they they did. They found two top notch guides to take them in take him into to the green inferno and while he's in there he meets uh two different tribes the yamamomos and oh the sh started with the s i believe i forget it forget it now on top of my head for for some reason but uh the tree people is is one of them uh he comes across they're they're both different cannibalistic tribes that are have problems with each other and one of them may or may not have killed the the group of documentarians and the documentarians did something horribly bad to to both groups uh because they were um despicable bad people and the further you go in you see the atrocities that they do because um they didn't know what what had happened until robert kerman's character had gone down there and he was able to um get in with the tree people tribe and are were able to to essentially um get back these film canisters that this documentary and crew was was what everything that they had filmed and and the further you go in on these films the, because they're going to show them on a late night or a uh, special for for people to to uh uh know about it because it's such a, a hot topic like oh somebody was this this crew went missing and and they they were killed and eaten by cannibals uh one of those things and the further that they go in on this on these reels they're seeing how bad these people are and the shit that they're doing to these other people like they're they're the reason that uh, the tortoise gets killed why the pig gets killed uh why the the one tribe gets backed into the hut and gets burned to death um they are very dastardly people uh they watch what this one person like pretty much die after they've tortured that person they don't they don't really show what they did to the person but they show the after effect of how they're how they look and the very shallow deep breathing and they're like oh she'll die eventually one of those ordeals um 
they're they are just bad. Like the when they kill the pig, it, the guy comes up and literally kicks it a couple of times before he shoots it with the shotgun. And he, it's not just a little little bit of a, a beak, and it's dead. It's it's like it's very very impactful. You know, it's it's something you will not forget. So he is essentially going in to get these film things back so they can do that, find out what happened to the crew. That's the roundabout way of what it's about. It's very, very uh, um, uh, simple, easy story to follow. There's no complicated twists or plot holes or anything like that, or twists. Um, there are some plot holes in it, but um, that's neither here nor there. They're, all movies have plot holes, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, that's just because films are, 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 uh, uh, done in a, in an aspect where we can't explain every single thing. We have to do some assumption in our brains, uh, which is, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> now, as far as any kind of ratings on this thing goes, on a technical side, this thing's probably a four out of five. It's above average, uh, because they're, they were able to do all this uh, found footage type stuff without making it look bad um, because this is found footage before found footage shit started coming out. And I say shit um, and I mean it because a lot of the found footage that comes out is pure shit. And I, and, um, I try, 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 try my hardest to get into it, but I just can't. Um, there's some of them that work really well, though. This is one that does. Um, so as far as an entertainment thing goes, this thing is a solid 5 out of 5. You know, this thing's a 9 out of 10 movie. It's one that uh, I highly suggest. I hope all of you go out and check it out if you haven't. Um, if you have, go ahead and rewatch it over the weekend. You know, listen to that amazing uh, uh, soundtrack that we have on there by Riz Ortolani. You know, there's, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's banging, you know, it's solid, solid stuff solid all the way around all right guys love your face as always i hope each and every one of you have a fantastic weekend i'll see you all on monday uh i'm not 100 percent what i got lined up for next week but i got a few ideas all right